Greetings and welcome to DAU's AI video learning series. This video we're going to briefly explain how AI learns to see and, and provide you with a 30,000 foot view of convolutional neural networks, also called CNNs. Uh, how they work, how they're trained, what the modern CNN, CNN architectures look like, and we'll maybe even get to a, an example a case in the, in the end here and teach you how to do that. Okay, so here we see AI tracking objects and labeling images and, and uh, these types of tasks are going to be crucial for many of DOD's weapon systems, and AI can help out a lot with those. And often multiple types of, of neural networks are used in conjunction with each other. So here we see the labeling that's going on here. This would certainly be the work of CNNs. And then recurrent neural networks are better at tracking objects and dealing with video. So we might do a part two of this video later with RNNs. But CNNs are certainly the biggies. So let's start simple and, and crawl before we run. Okay, so computers, uh, well, AI and computers in general, they don't see like you and me. Everything is numbers to them. And all sensor inputs have to be computed to numerical values, cameras, infrared, whatever. So our AI systems could be using IR, UV, visible light, LIDAR, or something else, or any combination of all of those to see. And of course, um, uh, you would need the proper sensor on the front end with that converted to the correct numerical output. But you know, once it's in numerical data, chances are we can use neural networks to help the AI learn to see with it. Okay. Now, for our purposes, we're going to keep it simple, and we're just going to take an image, and uh, we'll talk about images and how neural networks uh, take still photos or still images and, and, and learn from them. Okay, so this is a digital photo. And I'll bet you've all taken uh, digital, or this is a digital image, and I bet you've all taken digital photos before. And you know they're, you probably know they're made up of pixels, and pixels are little colored dots on the screen that all, you know, right beside each other that all form together to, to make the image. And from the computer's perspective, each dot is really just a number, and it, you know, that signifies the intensity of that pixel. Okay, so for our purposes, we're going to take a 256 by 256 pixel uh, image. And I know that's that's very low res for these days, but for academic purposes, that'll be plenty. And if we do the math here, you know, 256 by 256, while it's small, uh, it already adds to 65,536 pixels uh, to make this face here. All right. So then if we take a layer of neurons, and let's say we take a grid of neurons that's 128 neurons by 128 neurons, and then we want to fully connect every one of those pixels to every one of those neurons, uh, doing the math, that works out to 16,364 neurons. Okay, so uh, 128 times 128 is 16,364. So now if we want to connect every one of those pixels to every one of those neurons in a fully collect connected layer, uh, we're talking a lot here. Uh, we're talking, let's see here, do the math. We're talking 65 times 16,000, and we're over, already over a billion parameters. So you can see that's that's monstrous. Now, we, we initially tried like this. Engineers tried to, to, to hook things up like this, and, and it was just too much. It was just too huge, and the network wouldn't learn, and it was just a chocolate mess. So, and this is a pretty low resolution, so you, you can imagine. And oh, by the way, if you add color to this, um, you know, well, there's a red layer of pixels, 256 by 256, there's a green layer, and then there's a blue layer. Uh, so there's really three times 256, so there's really over 3 billion pixels, um, or 3 billion parameters, where, rather, the connections between the neurons and the, and the pixels already in this. So it's, it's just not tenable to, to work this way. So engineers, like we, we like to do, and, and we turn to, to nature to see how nature did this, and um, you know, we took the essence, essentially, of a biological neural network, uh, the, the optical part of the, of the brain, instead of just the regular uh, network like we talked about last time. And if we look to that biological network, you, you might not realize this, but the part of your eye that sees fine vision is about the size of an eraser on a pencil on the back of your retina. And we think, you know, we look at these images and we think it's it's uh, pretty high res everywhere, but really just that little piece of our eye is focusing on where it focuses is where the high res, in it, uh, res is. And our brains stitch that image together to make it look like it's detailed everywhere. You know, you'd swear, hey, there's detail everywhere, but really it's not. And, um, you know, that's kind of, that inspired a process called convolution. 
Okay, so let's take a look at how this works in a convolutional neural network, this convolution function, this looking at a fine, one little piece of the image. So up here we see from the image that we have a three by three square uh, that we're looking at in detail. And we do this by connecting each of those pixels in that uh, square to a neuron. Uh, and then the output feeds another, actually creates another image as we convolve. And that other image is called a, a, a feature map. And the size of this square we have here is three by three. So and we call that a kernel. And as we convolve this, we step that kernel across the bigger image. And here we're stepping it as a step size of one. So we call that a stride of one. And you can see how that neuron is building that new image, which each one of those step, which each one of those strides of that filter as it moves across that bigger image. Okay, and if you'll remember from insights to, uh, to the fundamentals of a simple neural network, each one of those connections uh, to the neuron from these, these connections here, uh, they have a parameter associated with it or a SNOPS weight. And that weight, we thought, said we could think of as a knob. And as the network learned, the knob got adjusted up and down. Um, so the output of that uh, uh, filter depends on what the knob setting is, so what those knob settings are for that filter. That, de that determines what it's going filter, to filter out or what it's going to let through or whatever your perspective is on that. Now these these uh, filter weights stay, or these knob settings stay the same uh, while it's doing the convolution function. They, they only get changed during the training mode, during the back propagation algorithm, uh, so they can minimize the error. But there could be, a, 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 each filter, depending on how those parameters are set, those knobs are set, is gonna filter for different features. And in this case, with this filter, it might've filtered for something that looked like this. So it turned this image into these little lines that look like this. And most CNNs are gonna have lots of filters. If, if to say we had three here, you know, the first filter might've filtered for straight edges and the second one might have filtered for curvy edges. And the third one might have filtered for what looks like dog paws here, if you will. But we don't really determine what these filters filter for. Uh, when the when the back propagation algorithm adjusts all the, the parameters, the knobs, it selects the features that it needs to filter for. So it kind of trains itself, if you will, with the algorithm to, to figure out what features to select for. And now modern, um, well, excuse me, first, before we get to that, we've got, you know, we, we showed nine knobs here, but really if we had color, we'd have a red, green, and blue. And of course we'd have 27. And then also for completeness, we usually add in another bias function, just a, a number, and then we have a parameter associated with that. And, um, and so that would take our, our input up to 28. So 27, if we had a bias, that'd be 28. And then also for completeness, the activation function in the neuron, it, for convolutional neural networks, it's usually called a ReLU, which basically if it's less than zero, if all these inputs sum to something less than zero, then it just comes out zero at the other end. If all those inputs sum, sum to something greater than zero, then whatever they sum to just comes, gets, just gets echoed and repeated right back out the other side. Okay, so a modern day uh, convolutional neural network will have hundreds of filters. And those hundreds of filters are, uh, you know, you might think, well, my goodness, Dave, you know, you got hundreds of filters and we got all these different parameters, red, green, and blue. And we got, you know, you said 256 was a small resolution for a 256 by 256 image. Uh, that's gonna be a lot of calculations. And it is a lot of calculations. Um, but remember, even though I just showed you this convolution happening one kernel at a time, there's really no reason it has to happen that way. You know, none of these outputs from each of these convolution looks uh, has anything to do with the other one. So you can calculate the whole thing at one time if you had enough compute power. And also if you have hundreds of filters, you could calculate hundreds of convolutions at one time if you had enough uh, compute power. And the um, uh, a fellow named Alex Krzyzewski, uh, he, he was a uh, when he, during his thesis work, he was uh, an, an actual student of uh, Joffrey Hinton. You may have heard of Joffrey Hinton. He'd recently retired from Google and has been interviewed by just about everybody and his brother uh, about AIs and some of the cautions we need to take with AI. Um, but anyway, Alex, uh, back when he was doing his thesis, he came up with what's become known as the AlexNet. And he really revolutionized the way uh, CNNs work and what people thought CNNs could do and, and really made them practical. 
And what he did uh, was, uh, is, is came up with a very deep neural network with many convolutional layers. So you can see he's got five convolutional layers in this network. And then he put fully connected dense layers on the ends. So this is a tradition, more of a traditional feed forward network like we did in our simple example of a neural network uh, video. Um, but these all, these are pretty big, 496 neurons uh, each for each of those. and. And uh, so, so he's got 80 million parameters about in this network. So 80 million knob settings, that's quite a bit. So for every training pass, you know, you got 80 million knobs uh, that you got to kind of look at. Uh, so it takes a, a bit of compute. And he figured out how to use a graphics processor unit to, uh, to change all of these settings at the same time. And, you know, graphics processors units were, were meant to handle, you know, high resolution graphics on computer screens, you know, 1920 by 1080 and, you know, times three because there's red, green, and blue, you know, compute all those pixels 30 times a second, 60 times a second, 100 times a second. That's a lot of compute uh, to, to figure out what that screen's going to be. Now, and they're not hard complications, but they happen a, a lot and very fast. So, and they're all done in parallel. So this, he, he, he was able to modify to, uh, to be able to adjust all those weights, all those parameters in parallel, and uh, and really really did some good stuff here, and has really really made it practical to train such big nets like this. So large language model, please summarize this video for me. We saw the impracticalities of using fully connected networks for large images. Drawing parallels with the human eye, we introduced convolving an image. We then learned how feature maps result from CNN filters and capture distinct features. Highlighting the advantages of parallel computations, we spotlighted how GPUs help. A high-level walkthrough of AlexNet provided an overview of how modern AI interprets visual data. If you would like to take any of DAU's AI courses and earn credit toward an official AI training credential, please click here or see the link to the comments below for the link to that. And uh, thanks for watching. Please check out the other videos in our series. And if you got anything out of that, please leave a like and subscribe.